I'm John Buchanan. In this video, we're going to start working with auxiliary effects within Logic. What auxiliary effects allow us to do is to create a, um, an effect process which can be shared by two sounds or more. So rather than an effect which only can be applied to one sound, we can use an effect across a number of sounds within our arrangement. And here's how that process works. I've got two sounds within this project, and what I want to do is to create a reverb solution which can be used on both of those sounds. Here's how they sound dry without any reverb at all. Okay, so what I could do would be to add a reverb to just one sound or just the other. But what I actually want to do is to create what's called an auxiliary send to which both of these sounds can be sent where reverb can be added. It works like this. Let's just take one of these sounds to start with. I'm going to take the top one. And I'm going to come to the sends area within Logic's mixer. I've turned on the mixer by pressing this button here, and I can see the two sounds side by side. And this area, as you can see, is labeled sends. What I'm going to do is to click here and select an auxiliary bus. I'm going to use the first one of those that's available, which is bus one. And when I release, what I get is a little auxiliary send, a little dial here, which allows me to choose the level of send. How much do I want to send this channel to auxiliary one? And I can also see that my mixer has grown. It's added this extra channel, which is called auxiliary one. And I'm going to double click here and I'm going to retype that as reverb. That's the effect that we're going to be adding in this space. So what I'm then going to do is I'm going to mute the second sound so we can hear this first one by itself. And then on the auxiliary track, I'm going to select Logic's Chromaverb, which is here at the top of my list. But if it's not at the top of your list, no problem. You can find it in Reverb and Chromaverb. And here is the reverb that we're going to be using. I'm actually going to increase the decay time a little bit so we can hear this a bit more dramatically. And now what we should find when I press play is that we'll hear both the original sound and some reverb being added to it. And the amount of reverb that we hear is controlled by this send level. So I'm going to turn it off to start with, and I'm going to dial that up as we listen back to this track to add the amount of reverb that we want. So that's sounding pretty good, and you can hear that the, uh, the higher the send level, the greater the amount of reverb that we have. Now, what happens if I want to add that second reverb, or the reverb, to the second sound within our project? Well, firstly, let's unmute it so we can hear it again. And by clicking on this track, we can actually see that instantly Logic has highlighted it within the mixer. Now, I don't have to set up that auxiliary again from scratch. It exists already. All I need to do is to tell this track that I also want to send this sound to bus number one. You can see that because we le uh, labeled it reverb, bus one is now called reverb, so it's easy for me to find it within the list. And when I let go, again, I get a new auxiliary send level for this track. So to add reverb to this sound, I just need to repeat the process of deciding how much of that I want on this sound. And these two dials are independent of one another. If I decide I want more reverb on the first sound and a little less on the second, I simply need to make those choices here with the auxiliary sends. And actually that balance is working well to have less auxiliary send on that second bassier sound than on the first one. Now, does this mean that I can't then apply individual effects to these tracks as well? No, it doesn't mean that. If we set up a second auxiliary, I could simply add that to just one sound rather than the other. So let's come back down here and to the first track, let's return and go to send number two. You can see that there's a little space available underneath the first one, and this time I'm going to set up bus number two. Again, the, new, uh, the mixer will expand to create the new auxiliary track for us, and this time I'm going to call this delay. On this auxiliary, what I'm going to do is to add a second effect. Let's again mute the second sound, so we're hearing this one by itself. And this time I'm going to come into Logic's um, effects, and within delay, I'm going to select the tape delay um, option here. 
This allows me to create a series of echoes for my sound and I can choose a, de a delay time, how far apart those echoes are going to be by choosing um, the uh, assorted options here within the delay time menu. I can also choose um, whether or not I'm going to have the whole of the frequency content of this in the sound as well, or whether I just want to delay a particular area of the frequency spectrum, which I can do with these sliders. And there are assorted other parameters available to me here as well. So what I'm going to do now when I press play is hopefully we're going to hear um, a um, delay which is going to be added to this track. By clicking up here in the delay time, I can also select the type of delay that I want. I'm going to go for a dotted eighth note, which is going to give me this nice syncopated skippy delay. Let's hear that. And you can hear those delays, particularly when I press stop right at the end, we've got this nice little sort of skippy effect, which is filling in the holes between these notes. Now, if I decide not to add auxiliary two to the second sound, what that means is we now have one auxiliary effect, the reverb, which is being shared by both instruments, and another one, which is just being applied to the first sound. Let's hear those two things together. And that's working nicely. If I decided later I wanted to add that delay to the second sound as well, no problem. I can come to its second send slot, select the delay, and simply turn up the dial until we're hearing that on the bass sound as well. So in this video, we've learned about the power of auxiliary effects. They are effects that can be shared between a number of different sounds. Imagine I had eight separate sounds within this arrangement. Those two effects, the reverb and the delay, would be available to all of them. And all I have to do, having created my first auxiliary send, is to decide whether or not I also want to add an auxiliary send on those other tracks as well.